Hi everyone, I'm thriller author J.F. Penn and today I'm here with Simon Toyne. Hi Simon! Hello! Hello! And just a little introduction, Simon is the best-selling author of the Sanctus trilogy, translated into 28 languages and published in 50 countries. The first book was the UK's biggest-selling debut thriller of 2011, and all three books in the Sanctus trilogy were Sunday Times bestsellers in hardback and paperback. And I love the Sanctus book, so I'm so excited to have Simon on the show. <laughs> just ask about your writing because you and Lee Child I think are the famous ones for giving up your jobs in TV screenwriting and becoming novelists um, although there are quite a few others who come out of, of screenwriting so I wondered like what are the storytelling techniques that you learn through being a, a, a TV writer? Um, well Lee and I both worked in commercial British television actually we weren't we weren't necessarily script writers we were producers I suppose I mean he, he did he worked for Granada um, and um, uh, and I kind of worked for BBC and all over the place um, and the thing is if you're making commercial television what you have to do <clears throat> is constantly hook the reader you have to hook them with an interesting story and constantly hook them and rehook them because if you're right, if you're in prime, sat in prime time, you're up against heavy competition. And if you're sat in prime time on a commercial channel where there's ad breaks, you are going to lose your. You, that's when you lose people because they'll go, I don't know, we sold stuff. Let's see what's on BBC One where there's no adverts. And if they, you know, if if there's something more interesting on it, you won't get them back. So you have to be really good at. Um, at kind of sneaky narrative devices to hook in a reader or a viewer in that case and keep them. When I when I was working in television, I, I had a I went to one of these kind of strange how to make best telly things where that someone had done some market research uh, where they'd studied their habits, the viewing habits of people, uh, and said that the on average um, the instinct to reach for the remote and see what else was on um, kicked in roughly every two minutes. So every two minutes, and and you know I mean that I bet it's less now. I bet it's like more like twenty seconds. People are going, yeah, I'm bored of this. What, what's next? Um, and um, and so what you have to do is you learn you learn techniques um, of um, of pacing really and structure. You know, you structure it properly so that you have a big proposition at the beginning that's intriguing enough to make you want to kind of like get through the first bit that develops it. Then you pose a big question, particularly if you're doing ad breaks. You pose a big question that then gets answered. You know, you want to know the answer of that, and it's constantly you know question and answer, learning learning more things, and so that at the end of it you have a resolution and you have a kind of broader knowledge of the whole thing. You see the whole picture at the end mm -hmm. that has been gradually re uh, you know revealed to you, and all of those techniques are. I could have just described what you have to do as a thriller writer because rather than just kind of engaging you and not reaching for the remote, you want them to turn the page. And and now if, you know, as people are reading them on e-readers or, you know, or multi or multimedia devices, if your book's a bit boring, they will then go and watch an episode of True Detective instead or they'll go and, on the internet or they'll go and, you know, yeah, look on Facebook or whatever. So you're competing with all of that. And so, you know, you, you do have to, they're, they're similar techniques, I think. And so, and it's a good discipline. It's a really good mm -hmm. discipline to, um, to sort of like constantly have to kind of construct those narratives and keep them fresh and interesting and make the surprises surprising because, you know, people are very sophisticated in their reading and viewing habits and they can spot a twist coming a mile away. So you have to second and third guess them. Mm. in order to make it fresh and so um so it's good discipline i think and so i think you know people who come from who come from um any kind of from tv or film um those narrative techniques of pacing and engaging the reader or the viewer are are very very similar mm. yeah. and, and, and also there's the discipline of course there is the discipline of having to do it professionally as in you turn up and be creative on demand you know, there's that brilliant um, H.L. Mencken thing saying, you know, I only write when I'm uh, when I'm inspired, but I, I see to it that I'm inspired at nine o'clock every Monday morning. <laughs> and, you know, and that's the truth. It's, you know, there's this kind of notions of writers sort of sitting in cafes and staring at <laughs> the middle distance and then some godlight hits them and then they write in a fugue until the morning and then there it's done. And it's just, and sadly, it's not like that, is it? It's, no, uh, no, it's, it's not. It's sitting and grinding it out and just and writing and writing, you know, professional writer. If you're a professional writer, you write when you don't want to write, you know, mm. which is often because mm. there's loads of other things to do. And it takes months to write a book, years to write a book. And it's like, it's not right. It's not right to be on your own in a room for that amount of time. 
in your head. It's weird. It's the definition of insanity, isn't it? Sitting in a room on your own listening to the voices. Making up worlds. Yeah, but it's 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 fun. No, oh, I mean, it's amazing. It's great. And I'm not. I don't want to be disingenuous or anything like that. But it's just. I'm, it's just. But if you're a professional, you have to do it. And then you produce a book, and you have to produce another book in a year or less. And you know, it's it's a, there's a discipline. And so that I think coming from something as fast moving as television is really good. Uh, apprenticeship I think mm. yeah and it's um but of course you as I said quit your job went and wrote this start of the book finished the book whilst working um but this your first book right uh became this massive global bestseller and most people don't manage that with their first book so do do you and, and I mean having read them all I think they're you know great books so they well deserve that success but do you think that that comes from the screenwriting side or do you have any other tips for writing a worldwide bestseller? <laughs> um, the, uh, well working for 20 years in television was a pretty good apprenticeship and the thing is you know I, I don't have um, uh, any unfinished books or, or multi multiple rejected books in my in my desk drawer this is this is genuinely the first book I wrote which I know sounds like sort of yeah I just wrote a book and it's bestseller <laughs> but I it was built on 20 years of you know writing kind of fairly terrible scripts and then writing better scripts and you know and then writing bigger programs and producing things and and so the rigor and the discipline of that you know they they all of the series I made and all of the narratives that I have been involved in creating and structuring were my first novels I think mm. and the, and even though you know and though the writing Writing and and the, though the writing is different, you know, like I said about description and stuff like that, and um, you know, and um, and the pacing is different because the rhythm's in the words rather than in the cutting. Um, it's um, the, the, I think that just comes from reading. Uh, you know, if you want to be a good writer, it's really simple. You you read a lot. It's as simple as that. You cannot be a good writer unless you read widely and extensively and often it, because. If you haven't written a book, it shows you how to write a book because it's all there in front of you um, and, and how narrative works and everything. And, um, and if you are writing a book, um, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, it sets, shows you where the bar is. You read to people who make you cross because you're like, oh, man, I wish I'd written that. Or that's, great. that's so good. You know, and it's, I'm constantly reading stuff that just sort of makes me sick because I'm like, oh, my God, that's just like that's such a great idea or a great character or a great turn of phrase or a brilliant bit of description. You know, there's always, you know, something. And if I read a book that, that's not good, I don't read it anymore. I stop mm. reading it. There's too many good books. Exactly. Just, you know, I'll, I just, you know, I'll give it a fair crack, but if it's not, if it hasn't grabbed me, then this, or, or there's too many errors in it of whatever it is that's, you know, if I'm starting to look at the, if I can see the joins, if I can start seeing the, you know, the, the manipulation that the strings being pulled, then I've just, and I'm a tough reader, I suppose, because you know I mm. I do it. You know, if you if you if you make a table, you can look at someone else's table and see where it's why it's rickety. Yeah. Um. So um. So that's it. I mean, that's the key. I would say. And 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 you know, it's um. And if you want to write a bestseller as well, write read bestsellers. You know, don't just read books that you'd quite like to read. And by bestsellers, I'm you know books that were written and came out on bestsellers at the time, not not things not slow burners that didn't do very well, and you know like mm -hmm. Confederacy of Dunces or something that was stuck in a drawer. Or that, you know, because you're not going to write Confederacy of Dunces. Don't go there. You know. Um, <laughs> But but those those things you know there, there is a very, there is a very good reason why um, most books are bestsellers, and it's because they have a strong universal appeal, and it might be not apparent what that appeal is with a book like something I don't know like Curious Incident the Dog in the Nighttime or something like that, and you're like it's a book about a keep with Aspergers yeah. right okay yeah. that doesn't sound very you know. But it's like, but there is something in there. When you read it, it's something very human and very real and very true and beautifully done and all that kind of stuff. And so, of course, that's universal. Mm. Um, and um, so I just read those. Read the ones that kind of strike a chord and think about what it is about them. And I think because a lot of writers um, think um, that uh, you write the best book you can and then somehow it's in the lap of the gods. And in actual fact, it's, I mean, it is to a degree. There's always a lot, you know, I've been very lucky. I've had a huge amount of luck as well. You have to have a lot, you know, a load of luck. But you can, you also make your own luck to a degree by putting yourself in the right position and kind of thinking about something that you want to read. And also that's the thing. It's like if you haven't, and a lot of the time with me, if, if I want to read it, it's because I haven't seen it before. Because I haven't read it anywhere else and I'm thinking and I get excited by the idea because I think, oh, this is new territory or this is a different take on something or or I'm excited about where this could go 
as a writer and also as a reader. It's like, you know, you just, and I have commercial sensibilities because of working for 20 years in commercial television. You know, that's, that's, I'm finely tuned to those commercial things. Mm. But the thing is, it's sort of, you know, ultimately uh, my tip for writing a bestseller would be just like read lots of bestsellers and, and just, you know, marinate yourself in the way they work because they are, they are generally, um, very, very, uh, kind of well honed machines of mm. narrative. Yeah, no, they do true. a very specific job. Yeah. Now, um, last question. Uh, I was just reviewing the books, um, and I discovered, uh, to my horror, that I didn't have Sanctus anymore because it came out before the Kindle, which was so I had it in print back in two thousand. No, it didn't. Yeah, it's, no, two thousand and eleven no, in Australia. Ah, uh, there you go then. There yeah, was yeah. no uh, Kindle. Sorry, I'm sh yes, there so you go. I have the other two on my Kindle, but not the first one. So I was just like, "That's crazy," because that, I remembered that I remembered the first book very well. And so, what do you think is you know obviously? So you you started in this kind of publishing thing, and you got the big deal in, uh, but the publishing arena has really changed a lot. Um, and a lot of my audience are indie authors, you know, running their own author businesses. What do you think about the changes in publishing? And is it is, have you seen anything of it, or are you? kind of insulated I guess um well I know I'm very much interested in it and um and kind of watching the changes and and I'm aware just looking at my own sales over the trilogy how it's shifting in different territories so more so my, my books sell very well on Kindle I think partly because they're very fast-paced and they're mm. short chapters as well mm. I think you know, my, my, all the books are multiple perspective uh, and again I think that comes from sort of my film tv background because you know it's you have a short scene and then you cut to another scene and part of the pace comes from the structure and the suspense comes from the structure of different points of view. So the re as a reader, you have a, a kind of better idea than any of the individual characters. And so you can be fearful for someone who doesn't know something that you know and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so they work really well on Kindle and, and I've definitely seen my sales sort of, you know, slide more towards eBooks and more people buying them on ebooks and they've certainly got a longer shelf life on ebooks you know the um the trilogy is still i think in the top 20 of the kindle conspiracy thriller chart and has been i'm pretty much permanently i think it's sort of you know they dot around but they come in um and i think the thing is it's again it, ultimately it's like if you're self-publishing I mean, obviously, if you're self-publishing, there are, there, are, there are a whole bunch of other hats you need to wear of marketing and publicity. But, but as a, as a, as a, as a so-called legacy author, you know, with a big publishing house behind me, I still have to do all of that. You know, there's still a huge amount of pressure on having a big social media presence and interacting with your readers and doing that. And I enjoy it. I, I, I totally get it because I have to do all of that for television. You know, it, I, I understand that you make the program, but then you have to get people aware of it otherwise no one will watch it and it's the same and I think the, you know the old days where you'd have a writer who delivered their book and then went away and sort of you know sat under a tree and relaxed and went around the world and then wrote their next book and whatever are gone you know to be a professional author now it's not a great deal of difference I don't think I mean I, the, 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 the things you have to do are the same whether you're you've got one of the big publishers behind you or whether you're doing it yourself um ultimately and this is the given is just got to be a good book you know there's got to be something uh, about it and but and you have to do it professionally if you're if you're um if you're self-publishing you still need to get it edited you still need to get someone who you trust to read it and tell you what is wrong with it don't go oh it's great don't show it to your mum who's going to tell you it's brilliant and you're amazing you want to show it to someone who's maybe got an axe to grind a bit and is going to say actually this character sucks and I don't care about them. Your central characters annoy it. You know, that's what you need because you need to put, you know, you build a tower and you want to push it mm. and see if it falls down or bits fall off it. And if they do, you shore it up, you make it stronger. Um, mm. And, you know, I have to, I'm going through a big second draft now. It's not as if just because I'm, you know, under the lovely umbrella of Harper Collins that somehow, you know, there's a whole team of people who do that for me. It's like, ultimately, I have to do it all. It's my story. It's my, my thing. I mean, I have a brilliant set of people who I've worked with now on four, coming up to four books and editors and people I trust but we still go through the whole thing of everything and you know testing it and mm. asking the questions and writing it and rewriting it and making it as good as it can possibly be being professional about it and then when it goes out I you know I blog and I 
I, I'm always on Facebook and Twitter, you know, and I, I love that. I use that as a break and talk to people. And, and because of eBooks, you know, people are discovering the books all over the world all the time. And so you get people who just discover it and, you know, have read it and love it and want to talk to you about it and what you're doing next. And, and I love that. It's great. It's a great, cause I can't travel everywhere cause otherwise I'd never write another book, you know, but it's a brilliant way of that immediacy. Um, so I can see it's changing. I think it's harder to get noticed. I think it's harder for new authors because there's so much stuff out there and there's so much of it is free. And I think the trouble is, and I, it's funny, I saw this in television, is there was a proliferation of, when I started, there were four channels in the BBC, mm. you know, in the, in the UK. There's BBC One, BBC Two, ITV and Channel Four. And now there's hundreds, you know, yeah. there's cable, there's all this sort of stuff. There's, um, there's, Netflix, uh, there's and Netflix and stuff. Fine. There's, you know, all iPlayer view on demand. People's viewing habits have totally changed. But what is really interesting is the quality stuff is still there. Mm. The top, there's lots more, there's lots more sort of lower grade stuff. Mm. There's a lot of mediocre stuff and there's a lot of terrible stuff. There's more of it. Mm. Uh, so there's more choice. So you have to kind of be a lot more, you have to curate your own tastes and you have to create, curate your own viewing a lot more. And I don't think that's any difference in reading, you know, and that's why, you know, I always used to finish a book. I start a book and I was committed and I would finish the book. And now just like you, if I read a book and it's not doing it for me within 20 pages, well, 30 you're generous. pages maybe. I'm like three pages. <laughs> Really, three? No, well, I'll give it a go because sometimes it's a slow burner. I mean, you know, no, but but I, I, but it's if if I look at a book and I've started and I put down and it feels like homework, yeah. it feels like I'm going back. It's like I'm not going to pick that book up. Yeah, and that's you know whether you're um, a legacy author or whether you're a self-published author or, or a hybrid, as I think most people ultimately will end up being. Mm. Um, you will. You just have to. You have to go there and bang your drum for your thing. And if you're passionate about it, it's, you know it's what you have to do. And it's mm. it's hard. It's 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 hard work. I think it's harder for people starting off because you have got this noise, this stuff, and it's really hard to sort of go actually mine's different but all you, you just it's focus on the quality and other readers will come i think because they will find it and because word you know word travels and people have i i recommend books that i read because people ask me you know i've just finished your trilogy what else do i read and i will you know i recommend books i recommend yours now and um and it's um because because I, I I want to be I want someone to help me navigate through the 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 the, the, the waters. My agent said uh, when about the whole digital thing said um, basically what's happened is the slush pile has been digitized. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's true. Totally and the thing is, mo and the reason and people have this notion of gatekeepers and oh well, I you know it goes on a slush pile and no every ever reads it and you never get picked. I got my book was picked up from the slush pile. You know, and it was and they do read them because they're they're passionate people and they want to find something good. Mm. Um, and so, and, and, but the trouble is the reason that, you know, the thing about the slush pile is the reason it doesn't get picked up is because most of it isn't very good. It's not, it's derivative. It's not unoriginal. It's badly written. It hasn't been edited. It's, you yeah. know, it's, it's it needs tons of work. In bad books don't sell and and they don't and people give them away for nothing and then people fill their their ebooks going oh, all these free books and actually a lot of the time they buy them because they've got a nice cover and, it, and what it tells you is that that person's better at doing covers than they are about writing books but that's the thing so i think just just focus on your craft read a lot hmm. whoever you are whether you're going to be self-published or whatever read a lot make it as good as it possibly can be write the story that you want to read and and it will happen Fantastic. So where can people find you and your books online? Uh, well, I am on Facebook. I have, um, I'm Simon Toyn author, I think. Yes, yeah, Simon Toyn author. Um, and I'm Simon Toyn Twitter, at Simon Toyn, or one word, low case. Um, and I've got a website, simontoyn.net, which is going to be overhauled recently, uh, uh, soon, yeah. recently, soon, soon, um, for the new book. Um, and um and you can buy my books anywhere, you know, sort of Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Worcesters, anywhere. And HarperCollins, I think they've got their own thing now, so you can buy it direct from them, I believe, now. It's <laughs> the future. Thanks so much for your time, Simon. That was great. No, thank you. It was a pleasure. Nice talking to you.